Well, good morning, everyone. On April the 20, 20th in, in, in 2010, that was a day that Alabamians, especially those living along the coast, uh, will never forget. On that day, the BP Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded. It was about 100 miles off of our coast. It killed 11 people. It caused oil to continuously flow for months. And for nearly three months, 3.19 million barrels of oil flowed into the Gulf. It left a tremendous impact on the lives and the livelihoods of all of our coastal residents and our entire state. Five years ago this weekend, which was which is always the, the biggest tourist time on the coast. Five years ago, there were no cars on the road in Gulf Shores and Orange Beach area and, and Dolphin Island. Uh, no one was in the restaurants. There was total despair and anguish with the people in that area. The economy was totally decimated. And then following that, over the next few months, oil began to wash up on the shores. And no one knew exactly what was going to happen to them. It was a difficult time. It was a difficult time for our state, not only on the coastal area, but it had a ripple effect all across the state of Alabama as far as our economy is concerned. Because the coastal area generates, with its tourism, a lot of support for other businesses all across the state. There were two significant damages that took place. It was the oil spill and it caused a tremendous amount of damage to our environment. But as I've already said, it caused also a tremendous amount of damage to our economy and the coastal areas and all over the state. And while neither of those is more important than the other one, both deeply harmed our state. Alabama's beaches have been long known as the most beautiful beaches in the world. And at the height of the oil spill, as I said, our beaches were empty. And our environment had been harmed. There was concern about the health and the viability of our ecosystem. And it's for that reason that we filed a claim in the Natural Resource Damage Assessment to ensure that our resources would be restored. On the economic side, when the oil spill occurred, the Gulf Coast experienced the immediate economic impact. The threat of the oil reaching our shores immediately impacted tourism, as I've already said. And when the oil and later the tar balls washed up, tourism continued to suffer. The damage did not end there. This event was so enormous that it struck all the businesses up and down the I-65 corridor and then even the connector areas to I-65. In individuals were laid off, and in other instances, they had their wages cut. All of these losses translated to the loss of personal income, business income, sales taxes, gasoline taxes, lodging taxes, and so on. These losses hit our budgets and it affected our state. Today, we are here to announce that the state of Alabama has reached an agreement in principle to settle its lawsuit with BP for the significant damages caused by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. This is a landmark settlement. It is designed to compensate the state for all of the damages both environmental and economic, that was caused by this BP accident. The total value of the agreement in principle for all the states, the Natural Resources and the BP's Clean Water Act penalties is approximately $18.5 billion. Now, let me repeat that. That's for all of the states, $18.5 billion. Alabama's share, including some of the money that we've already received, Alabama's share is over $2.3 billion.
For the damages that we suffered economically, this agreement sets out $1 billion that will be paid to the state, to the state of Alabama as a whole, for the economic damages that the state suffered. This payment, these payments will be made over an 18-year period of time. Environmentally, Alabama will receive over $1.3 billion total, and that will be used to facilitate coastal restoration projects here in our state. As you know, our state's general fund budget needs attention. I want to be clear that this money will help the general fund, but it is not the solution to our problems. We will continue to address the challenges of the general fund, but this money will not resolve the issues that we face for the 2016 budget. We're under a court order which limits what that we can totally say about this uh, settlement. And there are a lot of details that continue to be worked out. Uh, but our team will continue to work on the details, but we just wanted to let everyone know today of this fantastic agreement that we've been able to achieve. You know, I have a, two places down on the coast. I've had them there for many, many years, and I love the coastal area. That's kind of my second home. And I have visited so many places there. I visited Biola Battery and Dolphin Island and Gulf Shores and Orange Beach and, and all of the cities along that area. And, and we spend a lot of time down there. And while today's news will never be able to make up for the loss and the hurt experienced by so many Alabamians, it is a good step forward towards making Alabama whole again. The amounts that I've discussed today only relate to the state of Alabama's claims against BP and does not affect other people or companies that may have claims against BP. There are many people that I want to thank for getting us to this announcement today. First and foremost, and as you see us standing together, now that's not true of all states, but you see us standing together. I want to thank our, our Attorney General, Luther Strange, and his team of lawyers, Corey Mays, and Wynn Sinclair for the great job that they did in this case. We had a close working relationship from the beginning and our team, our team effort is a major reason that Alabama was the first case set for trial. Second, I want to thank Cooper Shattuck. When I took office in 2011, I appointed Cooper Shattuck to be my legal advisor. One of the first things that I did was to form an oil spill task force. And I asked Cooper to chair that task force. I tasked this group with, with helping the state gather all documents and all evidence of the injuries done to the state as a result of this disaster. And I asked this task force to coordinate all communications with BP concerning the oil spill and its effects on our state. This task force also worked to ensure that the money Alabama received in the form of grants was spent properly and fairly. Cooper also coordinated the BP litigation for me. Though I lost him a few years ago uh, when he became the legal advisor for the University of Alabama Systems, he has continued to help us in this case, and I, won't uh, I want Cooper to know how much I appreciate that. My Department of Conservation and Natural Resource Commissioner, Gunner Guy, and our state geologist, Dr. Nick Tu, served as trustees for the state natural resource damage assessment. Their team worked hard to ensure that our natural resource damage claims were all addressed. They were assisted by Jane Calamusa of Rosen and Harwood. Jane, not only could, she could not be here today, but uh, uh, obviously, uh, she may not have known we were going to have this announcement today. But Alabama's recovery on the environmental front would not have been possible without her. And they will continue on this process of selecting and implementing projects that will restore our natural resources. I want to thank Beasley Allen and all of the attorneys that helped us. Ron Jones, Parker Miller, Rick Stratton, 
and Gina Day, their unwavering support and countless man hours made this recovery possible. They provided us with the legal expertise, the resources, and the professional ability to prepare this case for trial with BP. And I want to thank you all for that. Before I close, I think it's important to also thank BP. BP uh, has come to the table, and we have settled this, uh, and I think uh, at a fair amount. I want to thank our federal partners. And, and also, I want to thank the other Gulf Coast states, because we all had to agree on this, and we have all worked together. I'm extremely, extremely proud of today's announcement and this strong partnership Alabama has had in preparing for what would likely have been the most significant piece of legislation this state has ever faced. With the agreement reached today and the compensation BP will pay for their responsibility, we're taking a significant step forward in our state and in the, especially the Gulf Coast areas to move forward with the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history. Now I'd like to call on our fine Attorney General, Luther Strange, to speak, and then we'll open it up for questions in just a second. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor Bentley, very much. This is a truly historic day for the state of Alabama, and I'm pleased to stand next to you, Governor, uh, my friend in this historic chamber, to announce that the state of Alabama has agreed to a landmark settlement uh, in its case against BP. The words historic and landmark are quite appropriate today because the outcome of this settlement will have a profound and lasting impact upon Alabama's future, and I'm very proud to have played a part in that. I was sworn into office along with Governor Bentley five years ago, and uh, in my first, first month on the job, was named coordinating counsel in this litigation for all the five Gulf states. That gave me a seat at the table from beginning to end and an opportunity to really make a difference for the people of our state, along with the men and women in our office. I promised back then that my two goals would be to pursue justice for the people of Alabama, to make our state whole from the damages it suffered from the worst environmental disaster in United States history. And I'm proud to say that we've met that goal. As the governor noted, I believe that infusing approximately $1 billion in natural resources and Restore Act monies into Alabama's coastal counties will help make their environment and economies whole. And I believe that placing $1 billion into the state's general fund over the next two decades restores the state's resources to where they would have been and should have been. I'm proud that this victory was built upon hard work. It caused the courts in Louisiana in charge of this case to put Alabama number one in line to try its economic damages case. Fortunately, as a result of this settlement, we won't have to do that now. And I'm very proud of our team of lawyers in the Attorney General's office. When I came into office, I promised to use our in-house lawyers instead of outside counsel to get this job done to save taxpayer money. And I want to thank the dedicated men and women in my office who have worked so tirelessly to lead us to this day. Special thanks to our lead counsel, Corey Mays, as well as DeWin Sinclair and Cecilia Moore, each of whom is a state employee dedicated to ensuring that the state receive the fullest measure of justice. Corey has been up against, and his team, some of the finest, most well-resourced and supported lawyers in the world, literally. And he has led the way with our team and our office, working with our partners and friends who the governor has acknowledged to secure this fantastic victory. I just couldn't be prouder of the great men and women uh, who represent the state of Alabama in the Attorney General's office. I don't think people realize that a guy like Corey Mays goes five years without receiving a salary increase. Five years. Uh, and he works tirelessly along with his team up against great, strongly uh, funded people. That's the kind of devotion that we have in our office. And I can't say enough good things about it. I'd also like to thank the agency council and our partners and the governor for his friendship and partnership on this tremendous 
tremendous result today. I'd also like to thank the court uh, that oversaw this litigation, Judge Carl Barbier and Magistrate Judge Sally Shushan. I guess having gone to school in Louisiana and being a member of the Louisiana Bar, came back in some way to help us, but I can't not tell you what a complicated, difficult piece of litigation this was, and their efforts uh, also contributed to this. So in conclusion, I just want to confirm uh, what the governor said. I think Alabama has received the most, the very best settlement possible. I think it will benefit future generations of Alabamians, and I couldn't be prouder to be a part of this team to bring this announcement to you today. Thank you very much. You know, there's one, one organization within the state that I left out also, and that's uh, our, our ADEM department. Uh, they, they did a, a great job also in, in helping us with, with the evaluation and, uh, of, of all the issues that we had to deal with. Now I'm going to open it up for questions. Yeah, this is a uh, an agreement in uh, kind or I, I, principle. Yeah, I, these are these are lawyers. I'm not, <laughs> but it's but it's an, but it is an agreement in principle, uh, and, and and some of the details have not completely been worked out yet, uh, but uh, we we all signed this agreement yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, we don't know yet. We have not worked those out, but the payment of the billion dollars will be paid out over 18 years, so you can divide. <laughs> yes. Well, let me say our, our Department of Conservation will be working, uh, especially with the money that has come through the NERDA process, through the coastal restoration. We'll be working also with a restore team. Uh, I'm the chairman of that. We, you know, that's down in the Mobile, Baldwin County areas. Uh, we have to remember that uh, the billion dollars that I talked about will go to the state of Alabama. The $1.3 billion that I, that I mentioned will go for the restoration of Baldwin and Mobile counties and the offshore. Some of that will be federal dollars, and so uh, that will be for the coastal area only. Uh, the $1 billion will be for the entire state of Alabama. But those projects will be looked at, they will be evaluated, and there's some very good projects down there that we need to, to spend the money on. Yes? Well, uh, we have agreements uh, on the settlement. You, you agree with the company uh, as the settlement is going to take place, how the payments will be arranged. Uh, you know, uh, that, was, that was part of the agreement. That was part of the compromise. Uh, we were going to get this amount of money, but it would be spread out over a period of time. Well, you know, if, if you divide the billion dollars by 18, you, you can come up with an approximate amount per year that, that we can put into the general fund. Uh, say it was $50 billion. That's about 12.5% of how much we need to solve the problem of the general fund. Uh, so this will not solve the problem. Does it help some? Yes, absolutely. Anytime you could get that amount of money, it, it will help. But we actually do not know yet when that money will come. Uh, so we, there, is no, there is a timetable for the payout. We don't know. We, th those details have not been worked out yet. But that's not going to solve our general fund problem. I don't want people to be confused. We're still going to have a special session, and we're going to still shore up the general fund. Governor, are you going to suggest that the money going to the specific funds within the general fund, or we have not made that decision yet. Uh, but I will say this: if any unearmarked money in the state of Alabama automatically goes to the general fund. Yes. Uh, I, I, I will have to say that I believe that this is probably more. Uh, this agreement helps us more. And uh, that's why we decided to take this.
was the general fund to consider. Uh, no, we, the, the, the current situation with the general fund was not a factor. We've been litigating this case for five years. I think the, the, probably the driving factor was uh, the uh, decision by the court to make Alabama the first state to have its economic damages trial. We had put that on the calendar to be tried here in Montgomery before a jury. I think the hard work that we put into getting that trial date set uh, really uh, uh, created an environment that, uh, that brought everyone to the table. So it was just uh, the timing was related to that probably more than anything else. But I will say this, uh, this is the largest environmental disaster in American history, the largest case related to something like that, and it's been settled in five years uh, with restitution and justice to the environment and to the citizens, uh, which is a magnificent accomplishment, however you look at it, when you think about the Exxon Valdez and other cases. The complexity of this case and the moving parts and the states, uh, it's extraordinary. And, and, and let, let me say something else about that also. Had it not been for the cooperative leadership with this team that I've called out here and with the Attorney General, Alabama took the leadership role in this, more so than any other state. Now, we, did, we weren't the squeaky wheel that got the grease. Louisiana was. And I'm not being critical of that. I mean, they had a lot of uh, environmental damage there. But I want to say this. If it were not for our team, if it were not for this team right here, if it were not for our Attorney General, we would not be where we are today. Because we were prepared and the case was coming to Alabama, we were prepared to go to court and we were prepared to win. And you know, you always negotiate out of strength, you never negotiate out of weakness. And we were strong and we were ready and we were prepared and we had our, all of our losses ready. We knew what we had lost, we knew how we were going to do this and we had a great team in place. That's why they came to the table, that's why we have this settlement. The court will decide that, that they will not come out of this money. The court will decide that. If this is a blessed by the courts and this final deal is ultimately agreed to, which I'm confident it will be, this will be the end of litigation against BP. Uh, there are some things to be dealt with. It's just cleanup matters, dismissing cases and so forth but this will be uh, the end of the road. There are a few groups out there that have uh, claims remaining, moratorium claims and other things that really don't affect the state of Alabama. So this is uh, the end of the road for, uh, for our state. Well, I, I'm going to let it, leave it to others to, 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 to make that uh, decision, I guess. But I think we fared extremely well because we were a state that was in the middle, literally and figuratively. We had significant economic damage and environmental damage. And I think when you balance the two and the recovery we got, you'll see that we, uh, we were able to get justice in both of those categories, which I think was really the key for us. Um, I, I, I would. I think there'll be books written about that. Uh, this will be studied in law schools for a long time. Uh, I, I think it was just a matter of good lawyering and, and a good court running of an efficient, massive, complex piece of litigation. Uh, as I said, there were key milestones. Our getting our case sent back to Alabama to be able to try that was probably the most recent milestone that, that people will look back on and say that's, that may have been a factor. Uh, are you talking about the billion dollars? Or are you talking about the uh, the economic or the environmental? Uh, the billion dollars. The billion dollars. The billion dollars will be paid out to us over 18 years. That money will go to the general fund. But no plan at all specifically what kind of action it could go for. Uh, it will go to shore up the general fund. <laughs> uh, that that will be determined by the legislature. Let me, let me uh, point, there are, there are $2 billion, if we talk about a billion dollars, there are really $2, part, $2 billion uh, 
funds here, if you will. One is the environmental and natural resources damages, which is part of the Restore Act, which is going to be uh, administered over future years by a Restore Council that's in the Gulf of Mexico, that along the Gulf of Mexico, which is local elected officials. The federal government will be a partner in that. That's the environmental piece of it. The other billion dollars we're talking about to get to over $2 billion today is the economic part of it, which is what the governor just, just referenced. Yeah, there, there are a lot of projects out there that will be evaluated uh, as far as the uh, environmental portion is concerned. Uh, that we will, we will, our, uh, uh, co our conservation department will oversee that, and, and so we'll be working closely with, with uh, the people along the coast to see what projects need to be done. The Restore Act portion, a large part of the $1.3 billion will go into the Restore Act. There are several buckets, as we call them, in the Restore Act. Uh, bucket one has to, a lot to do with uh, not only environmental damage, but primarily economic. Uh, and so we'll be able to use some of that for economic projects. Uh, but also the bucket three, uh, some of that can be used for that also. So uh, the details of that will be worked out later. Uh, I chair the uh, Restore Act Council, and as uh, the Attorney General just said, that's made up of uh, local elected officials, county commissioners, and mayors down in the Baldwin County and Mobile area. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, if you go back to originally, uh, obviously a lot of this money would have gone to the Education Trust Fund. But as it comes into our state, we have to put it where the needs are. Uh, the needs are, are in our general fund, and if it's not earmarked, it automatically goes to the general fund. Now, we may earmark it into the general fund. I, we have not made a decision on that yet, but uh, this unearmarked money will go into the general fund. We, we don't. The it, it, will, it, it will not factor into the special session except to uh, that I, I don't want the legislature to think that this is going to solve the problem because it certainly is not. And we really don't know exactly when the first payment will arrive. We've got to look to the 2016 budget. We've got to look to October the 1st, 2016, I mean 2015 for the 2016 budget. So you can, can you factor it at all into the I, I think you could always factor it into the budget for the next 18 years. Uh, but uh, I, this is not going to solve our problem. As I said, if, if it were $50 million this year, I, I don't know when we will get that. If it were that, that's only 12.5% of what we really need to shore up the real problem that we have in this state. We, we, we actually did not have it at that time. We did not have an economic impact statement because we had not we had not tabulated all of our losses. It has taken us four or five years to get to this point with a lot of people giving their depositions and, and a lot of agencies and a lot of departments uh, talking about the losses that have occurred. So uh, we did not know at that time. There, there was no assessment when we came in office. And that's why I formed the task force. I formed the task force to make the assessment. That's why I put Cooper Shattuck in charge of that. And so we formed this task force to begin to really, really put together what the losses were and find out exactly what we had lost. So we, we had none of that. And so that's why we did this. Governor, does this settlement mean it's more likely to have to all safeguards towards some project, or is that still? Uh, we hope that uh, the legislature will pass the piece of legislation that uh, will allow us to uh, float the $50 million bond issue. Uh, we hope that that, uh, that will be the process through which we will be able to finish uh, the Gulf State Park Lodge. Yeah. Well, uh, well, it'll be uh, per project, and I'm sure that it will not all come at one time. But you also, you have to remember that part of that money that I'm talking about, $1.3 billion, I don't want to get into the weeds on this. Part of that uh, is NIFWIF money, which is, which is money co coming from the fines and penalties uh, that were assessed uh, the, the, uh, because of the damages. Uh, so I, you, we can get you some of the details on that uh, later, but it, it gets 
fairly confusing sometimes, and I don't think we need to get into that right now. Uh, I'm always afraid that uh, uh, anyone can make the excuse uh, to do to take some money that's given to you in a one-time fashion and not solve the real problems of our state. Yes, I, I, I'm always concerned about that. But I have the utmost faith that, as I've talked to legislators over the last uh, month and a half, that they are willing to solve this the real problem, which is changing the way we budget in the state of Alabama and to help a long-term solution for the state of Alabama. This will help. If it's $50 million, certainly that will help. But if you need $400 million, that's not going to help. I, I mean, it's going to help, but it's not obviously not enough. Okay, one more question. Yes, sir. Governor General Strange, I know you said, well, General Strange, that there was still some activity going on, some loose ends that had to be tied up. But there's nothing that you can see that could derail what you announced here today and what's going through today. Well, in, uh, in these kind of matters, you never say never, but I would say uh, I'm highly confident that this uh, deal will, uh, will stand up and will be approved by the court. And it's really an incredible accomplishment uh, to get all these parties together dealing with this amount of money and uh, all the other factors that went into, uh, into play. So it is truly, as I said at the beginning, a landmark decision and an historic day uh, in Alabama uh, legal history for sure. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.